thank you all for being here today. I am joined by uh, Vanita Gupta, the Assistant Attorney General for the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division, as well as obviously our great U.S. Attorney, uh, Steve Dettelback, uh, the Mayor and the Chief. It's good to have you all here as well. After a thorough and independent review, the Department of Justice has completed its civil pattern of practice investigation into the Cleveland Division of Police. Now, that investigation spanned more than a year and a half, and it was launched in response to a, a series of troubling high-profile use of force incidents, as well as by numerous public calls for a federal investigation by civic leaders, uh, Congresswoman Marsha Fudge, and by, by Ma Mayor Jackson. Since March of 2013, the Justice Department has closely examined nearly 600 use of force incidents that occurred between 2010 and 2013, including the incidents involving the use of lethal and less than lethal force. We have determined that there is reasonable cause to believe that the Cleveland Division of Public Police engages in a pattern and practice of using excessive force, and as a result of systemic deficiencies, including insufficient accountability, inadequate training and equipment, ineffective policies, and inadequate engagement in the community. Now, under Mayor Jackson's leadership, the city has acknowledged that the department's findings that raise issues of importance to people really throughout this community. And together, we have agreed to a statement of principles that will lead to a court-enforceable consent decree, including an independent monitor who will oversee the implementation of sustainable reforms assess compliance based on objective measures and ensure that robust new policies and practices will result in more effective and constitutional policing. Accountability and legitimacy are essential for communities to trust their police departments and for there to be genuine collaboration between police and the citizens that they serve. And although these issues are, as I said, complex and the problems long-standing, we have seen in city after city where we have engaged that meaningful change is possible. Meaningful, positive change is possible. The Justice Department has worked hard over the last 18 months to complete a thorough and independent review of the Cleveland Division of Police and its use of force. When we opened this investigation in March of 2013, at the invitation of Mayor Jackson, we set out to uncover the facts and follow them wherever they might lead. The investigation concluded that there is a reasonable cause to believe that the Cleveland police engage in a pattern and practice of unreasonable force in violation of the Fourth Amendment. That pattern is manifested in a range of ways, including the unnecessary and excessive use of deadly force, including shootings and head strikes with impact weapons, the unnecessary, excessive, or retaliatory use of less lethal force, including tasers, chemical spray, and fists, excessive force against persons who are mentally ill and in crisis, including in cases where officers were called exclusively for a welfare check, and the employment of poor and dangerous tactics that placed officers in situations where avoidable force became inevitable. As part of our investigation, we also assessed the reasons why officers resort to excessive force, and our investigation revealed that the causes of these patterns or practices were systemic and resulted from organizational deficiencies. Principal among these is the Cleveland Division of Police's failure to implement effective and rigorous accountability systems. Force incidents too often were, are not properly reported, documented, investigated, or addressed with corrective measures. Supervisors throughout the chain of command have endorsed questionable and sometimes unlawful conduct by officers. Officers are not provided with sufficient and adequate training, policy guidance, and supervision to do their job safely and effectively and community policing, pro, uh, policing strategies are not yet sufficiently embedded in the division. In the course of our investigation, we also discovered that some of the division's search, seizure, and arrest practices appear to violate the Fourth Amendment, and we've asked that the division work with us to address these concerns, though they are the beyond the scope of our initial investigation. Before I conclude, I would like to also address and speak directly to the men and women of the Cleveland Division of Police. We thank you for your service. We know you have an enormously important and difficult job. And this investigation has revealed that you are being asked to perform that job without sufficient support, guidance, training, and supervision, and sometimes without adequate equipment. There were some themes, though. One theme was that too often officers escalated confrontations with individuals that they were interacting with instead of using 
accepted tactics to de-escalate some of those encounters. And the investigation has never been and wasn't about playing the blame game for any individual or officer. Instead, we looked for root causes. And we believe that we identified some structural deficiencies. And it's those root causes, those deficiencies, that we pledge to work side by side with the leadership of the Cleveland Division of Police and the city collaboratively to remedy. Most significantly, there needs to be, our finding letter says, better accountability in general and for the unreasonable use of force in particular at the CDP. We found, frankly, that sometimes a rubber stamp mentality or approach exists to these kinds of incidents of excessive force. And when accountability falters, trust also falters. And the investigation has never been and wasn't about playing the blame game for any individual or officer. Instead, we looked for root causes. And we believe that we identified some structural deficiencies. And it's those root causes, those deficiencies, that we pledge to work side by side with the leadership of the Cleveland Division of Police and the city collaboratively to remedy. Most significantly, there needs to be, our finding letter says, better accountability in general and for the unreasonable use of force in particular at the CDP. We found, frankly, that sometimes a rubber stamp mentality or approach exists to these kinds of incidents of excessive force. And when accountability falters, trust also falters. Two of the more troubling parts of the finding letter are that individuals who are involved with investigating these claims, these force incidents, actually told us that sometimes they attempt to slant the way they do their reports to try and put things in a favorable light to the officer. And in addition, more than one individual responsible for investigating these kinds of incidents said that they were using a beyond a reasonable doubt standard in their administrative use of force investigations. And that is, of course, not a proper standard for an administrative or disciplinary process.